if you look at any major invention, like the automobile, for example, the basic body design is set in place from the very beginning. You've got four wheels, a chassis, a drive shaft, two axles. There are certain basic features of all automobiles that have persisted since Ford and Benz got the whole thing going over a century ago. In the decades that followed the introduction of the automobile's basic framework, designers and engineers have created thousands of variations on the original theme. But regardless of differences in size, color, and chassis design, the foundational body plan remains consistent to its original form. And an interesting thing about the fossil record is that there's a similar top-down pattern evident in the history of life. The basic body plan of the arthropod phylum has a segmented torso, jointed legs, and an exoskeleton, all of which arose suddenly at the beginning of the Cambrian explosion. And today we still see the continuity of this original plan, this foundational idea in over a million species of animals. How do these new animal body plans and fundamentally new forms of life come into existence? This was the mystery that Darwin set out to solve, but everything we've learned in biology over the last 50 years has brought this mystery back with a vengeance. How do you explain the origin of the Cambrian animals seemingly out of nowhere? This isn't just a problem of explaining the absence of evidence in the fossil record. It's also a problem of explaining everything we know about life right down to the level of molecules and cells. The biological structure of a Cambrian trilobite was as complex and sophisticated as a modern crab. Its organs included a brain, gut, heart, and compound eyes. Each organ was constructed from specific types of cells. Each cell type was made from dozens of specialized protein molecules. And each protein was assembled from a four-letter chemical code in a section of DNA called a gene. Now, for the evolutionary process to transform a simple Precambrian organism like a sponge with four or five cell types into a Cambrian trilobite with at least 10 times that many different types of cells, that's a huge leap in complexity. And to make that leap, you need a vast amount of new genetic information. Where does that information come from? That's the central mystery of the Cambrian explosion.